good day class what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be doing our theory aspect of our lectures and we're going to be doing it all via the blackboard learning system as we are obviously unable to see each other in person um, as for the practical side we are a little bit unsure of how we're going to do it at the moment as um, it's going to be proved quite difficult without you guys being there in person but what you can do for me so long is keep practicing your theory side um, learning the location, the indication, the needling depth and then you can keep practicing finding the points on yourself that we have already done and then we will give you an update as soon as we know what we're going to be doing okay and then we're going to be carrying on with the bladder meridian today uh, if you remember from last week we did up to bladder 3 which was on the anterior hairline so let's move on so as you can see here on my slide I hope it's clear we're going to be doing the points on the cranium and how you find these points is quite interesting and there's a good method we can use to find all of these five points going on from bladder 4, bladder 5, bladder 6, bladder 7 and bladder 8 uh, what we do is we first find the latitude so how we find the latitude of these points is we locate the midline which is normally the do meridian and then from there we go 1.5 turn lateral to that okay so we take the midline and we go 1.5 turn lateral how you get that is you we already know that the distance between the anterior hairlines the angles of the hairlines here here and here is um, 9 turn so what we do is we take half that distance so from the midline to the the end of the anterior hairline it's four and a half turn and we do one third of that distance which will be 1.5 and then another third would be three and then the final third would be four and a half turn okay and then that will give you your latitude measurements so you're basically going one one third of the distance from the do meridian to stomach eight which is at the connection of the anterior and lateral hairlines okay and then we're going to find our longitudinal message met so which then we're going to find our longitudinal measurements which are found from the anterior hairline or they can be found from the previous point so how you do it is to, for the first one bladder four we go using the hairline and we go half a turn into the hairline and then if you want to find bladder five then your two options are either going half a turn from bladder four or one turn from the anterior hairline um, and I quite liked using the hairline because then we can find each point individually instead of having to find all the previous points. For instance, if you were trying to find bladder 8, you'd have to find all these points if you only knew the distances, the difference in the distances. Um, whereas if you know the distance from the anterior hairline, you can go straight to 8, knowing exactly how far it is. Um, yeah, so the first two is half a turn, half a turn. And then from bladder 5 to 6, it goes one and a half turn. For all of these points yeah, so this is just showing you that we found the flow of the meridian at the 1.5 turn line and then we're going to use that for bladder 4 to bladder 8 as I said and then how we find the longitudinal talked about all this and then we did bladder 4 bladder 5 is one turn or half a turn from bladder 4 and then finding bladder six we find that it's one and a half turn from five or it's one and a half plus one turn which is two and a half turn from the anterior hairline and then the rest of them are all 1.5 from each other so you see that's 2.5 like we said and then the rest of the points will all be 1.5 from the previous point so as we go 2.5 plus 1.5 is 4 so bladder 7 is 4 turn. and then bladder 8 we say 4 plus 1.5 is 5.5 so from the anterior line um, and then what so how would you find these locations is if you guys remember from the anterior hairline to the posterior hairline it's 12 turn um, so what you would do is you just take that distance and then you divide it into three equal parts which each would be four turn four turn and this gives you seven bladder seven as that's four turn 
and then um, how you go from there is you go from the fourth from the anterior hairline to bladder seven divided in half which is two turn and then you go half a turn up that's bladder six and then for bladder five you just use the anterior hairline go one turn in and then for bladder eight up here at the top what we would do is we'd go from bladder seven and we go the bladder seven is up to the one third so we take this third and we take the second third and we divide them in half and that would go to six turn and then we go half a turn anterior okay so just remember bladder eight is half a turn anterior whereas bladder six is half a turn posterior okay and then let's move on to the actual points now so bladder four we already talked about this one it's just at the 1.5 turn lateral to the midline and then we're going half a turn into the anterior hairline and then remember I talked about the thirds we take the thirds from the due meridian and stomach eight and we divide it into three and the medial third is where bladder four will lie now what can we use this point for we can use it for headaches epilepsy dizziness blurring and failing of the vision nasal obstructions and epistaxis so these are all local conditions for where the point is nearby it's right by these these areas okay and insertion is subcutaneous so we're just going through the skin and then you're targeting if you're targeting a headache at the back of the head you'd go more posterior whereas if you're targeting the eyes and nose you'd obviously aim the needle anteriorly and then your insertion is 0.5 to 1 turn bladder 5 it's also on the cranium as we said you go half a turn to bladder 4 and then you go another half a turn to bladder 5 and we're using still that 1.5 turn line um, so one turn from the hairline and very similar functions as you can see it's used for headache epilepsy convulsion and blurring of the vision which are all related to the path of our meridian insertion exactly the same 0.5 to 1 turn bladder 6 chengguang its location is also on the cranium 1.5 turn posterior to bladder 5 so we find if we find bladder 5 then we go 1.5 turn can get to bladder 6 how I do it is I go from the anterior hairline and we go two and a half turn posterior um, using that method I described earlier and then very similar functions on these points headache blurring of vision nasal obstruction and um, subcutaneous insertion again 0.5 to 1 turn Letter seven, Tongtian. So this one is 1.5 turn behind, posterior to bladder six, or four turn posterior to the anterior hairline, and functions similar again: headache, dizziness, now nasal obstruction, epistaxis, and rhinorrhea. And insertion exactly the same: 0.5 to one turn. And bladder eight, it's also on the cranium, 1.5 turn posterior to bladder seven. Or 5.5 soon um, posterior to the anterior hairline and on, on that same line 1.5 turn lateral to the midline functions similar again dizziness blurring of vision tinnitus and mania that's a different one to the other points insertion exactly the same 1.5 to 0.5 to 1 turn and that's how you find those and then bladder 9 so this is the first one that's going towards the posterior aspect of the head uh, so on the posterior cranium this one is found slightly different now as the line is moving a little bit closer to the 1.3 turn lateral to the midline um, how we find this point is we first have to find now who governing vessel number 17 which is located on the midline and slightly on the superior border of the external occipital protuberance so if I just draw a little line here, this is the protuberance here. You can see going down there, there's like a little bump you can feel on the back of your he head here. Um, if you go, you must be careful not to go too far down to where your spinal column starts because then you'll be feeling your spinal processes. So you find the protuberance and you go up from the protuberance to the, f the little indentation at the top. That's do 17. Now, now who? And then what you go from there is you go 1.5 turn 
lateral uh, and that's where you find this point it's used for very similar functions headache dizziness um, neck pain ophthalmalgia which is pain of the eyes and nasal obstruction and then again if you're wondering how we actually find this point so what we do let me get my pen out again so we know the distance from the mastoid processes is 9 tin so again you're going to divide it from the midline to the mastoid process into 3 that's going to give you the medial third is 1.5 and then we're going to go just slightly medial to that about 0.2 tin medial to give us our mark um, insertion very much similar to the other points that we've done 0.5 to 1 tin subcutaneous okay and then bladder 10 this is a frequently used point and quite an important point as we use it a lot for neck pain and neck conditions as you can see uh, the fourth indication here this one's called Tian, Tian Chu, and it's on the back of the neck it's located again 1.3 tsun lateral to Yamen which is GV15 this time um, and GV15 how you find it is again we use the ex external occipital protuberance and this time we go half a tsun inferior to the external occipital protuberance um, that gives you the point okay sorry about that so what's going to happen is that you're actually going to find the external occipital protuberance and then you're going to keep following it down to the base of the external occipital protuberance that is 260 and then what we do from there is we go half a tune below that to find the 250 which is do and governing vessel are two names for the same for the same thing for the meridian governing vessel is obviously the English term and do is the Chinese term okay so once we find the governing vessel number 15 Yamen then we go 1.3 tsun lateral to it again so it's again that 1.3 measurement going 1.3 lateral and then this image here on the right is to show you we're in this gap at the lateral end of the trapezius muscle so you find the trapezius muscle You'll feel it bulging at the back of your head. You're just on the lateral border of it in this depression. Okay, and then functions. So we're using this one. We use this one, like I said, a lot for neck conditions. And pain in the neck, pain in the shoulder, pain in the back. And then we can also use it for other things such as headache, nasal obstructions, and sore throat. So let's just talk a little bit here about the different types of headaches. Um, You've seen quite a few of the meridians have points that can treat headaches. So what you need to note is that there are three major areas um, that we talk about with headaches. We talk about occipital, um, and then we talk about parietal and frontal headaches. So those three, each one is based on a different, uh, different type of meridian, and we use the depending on the location we will use at different points as they are better for each type of headache so you'll do this a bit more again in your diagnostics and your um, in your next year when you talk about treating specific illnesses but just a brief understanding um, the bladder meridian is more specifically for uh, what we call occipital headaches which is um, yeah the Taiyang meridian or the stomach eight if you remember which was on the side of the head is more better for a Shaoyang type headaches which is more the parietal the side of the head headaches and then frontal headaches which are Yang Ming headaches that that will use points more on the frontal side of the head which would be um, the Yang Ming we could either use Yang Ming meridians such as again the stomach or we could use um, the bladder points but more on the front of the head bladder points Then let's carry on bladder 11 so when we start with bladder 11 we're starting on the points on the back uh, and how you find these we've done this last week if you guys remember 
we talked about how to find the and count the spinous processes. Um, so what you do is you find the midline, and from there you need to find the medial borders of the scapulas, and the distance between these two medial borders is six sin. And then if we obviously we half that, so from the midline to one would be three sin. And then the medial bladder meridian is obviously, the medial one is going to be at the 1.5 turn mark, uh, as you can see here. And then it runs from this, from the, uh, from T1 all the way to the fourth sacral forum, which is all the way down here. And that's points, bladder points 11 to 30 will run all the way along here. They're basically almost at every spinous process, except for one or two places where there isn't one. And then the lateral one runs at the three turn mark, which is the medial border of the scapula. And this one starts slightly lower down at T2 and runs again to the fourth sacral vertebra, not the foramen. Okay. And this runs from bladder 41 to bladder 54. And then this was the uh, slide to show you how to count the spinal processes. So remember, we feel down the base of the neck for the first palpable vertebra, which is C6, and then the next more readily palpable is C7. And then what we would do is, as you remember from last week, you have the patient seated on the bed, ask them to tilt their head forward, and you'll see C6 and C7 will become uh, slightly more prominent and the space will increase a little bit. Uh, and then you, what you can also do to confirm that you have the right location is placing your two fingers on the spinal cord and asking the patient to tilt their head left and right. And obviously C6 and C7 will rotate slightly. When they rotate their head, you'll feel them rotating slightly, as T1 won't move when they rotate their neck. And then obviously we can confirm that using the angle here of the scapula. Okay. And then, yeah, we would count C6, C7, and then T1 can be counted downwards. Um, you can use the angle of the scapula down here to find T7 and you can use the iliac crest down here to find L4 as the iliac crest is level with the spinous process of L4 whereas this angle of the scapula is level with T7.